Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Ultra Hardware, number 44132. This is a knob storeroom lock. Um, this used to be made with a Schlage C Keyway 6 pin. Uh, an easy code for that might be uh, SC4. If you see SC4, that's an aftermarket code for a 6 pin Schlage C Keyway. They don't offer this in a 6 pin anymore. It's a 5 pin only, and I'm removing the contents from the box so we can go over that material, uh, over this material one item at a time. Um, we're going to discover uh, right away if if these will take a six pin key. Um, this is light duty. They call it grade three. Uh, I have no reason to believe that it's not grade three. Grade three is the lightest of graded duties from ANSI BHMA, which means that this this is tested to a quarter million cycles. Okay, seems like a nice lock. I have sold locks of this nature for decades and you know it's just a cheap imported lock good quality when i say cheap it's inexpensive it's disposable um, in that regard and certainly has its place in the market uh, being inexpensive and you know you need a lock on a door we'll sell these to clients uh, this client is a property management company i believe and they're probably using it in their rental units somewhere who knows where storage doors uh, very likely common doors that are supposed to be vestibule or storeroom function always locked on the outside always unlocked on the inside key a couple of keys will come with come with it you always need to keep the key to get in um, also we'll sell these to people who just want temporary locks for you know lock up doors and construction sites typical things like that There'd be no reason why you couldn't use this uh, in any application, really, being mindful that it is uh, a grade three lock. It's the lowest grade available. Grade two is a half a million cycles. Grade one is a million cycles. Uh, and I would certainly not discourage you to use this lock. It is inexpensive. It, it, is, it seems to certainly be of, of, of decent construction. And I would see no reason not to use it, provided it met your requirements. Um, a requirement that it wouldn't meet, of course, is getting replacement parts. So when I say disposable, it's just because, you know, if this retracting hub and the springs that govern it no longer work, you know, you'd be looking at a new lock. So what I'd like to do is tackle right away the keyway question. So this has come, this includes a five pin Schlage C keyway. I have a six pin cut key here. If the key will go all the way in, oof. yeah, that is really tight. This is a Schlage original blank. Um, that is that broaching is really tight. Um, the reason that we go through this exercise is because people want to know if they can master key them. And the question ultimately becomes, you know, are they five or six pin? So we're going to take this apart, if I can. And study this cylinder just quickly to see if we can determine that. It's a question that we get all the time. And the factory is good. There's a particular gentleman at the factory who's exceptional with responding. He is at least middle management and he, he does a really great job. Yeah, this is a, this, I don't have to take the cylinder apart to tell you this is a, this is most definitely a five pin cylinder only. Um, it's certainly possible that a six pin blank, it is not possible. A six pin blank is not going to enter this. I can hold the shoulder stop of an actual six pin key to the face of the cylinder and you can see the length of the key would absolutely breach through the outside of the cylinder um, and need to occupy the space that the tailpiece occupies. So this is a five pin only, um, absolutely only. Uh, you know, since we have this taken apart, I can show you how to put this back together and then hand it accordingly. So let's dive into that real quick. That'll be fun. 
So let's put this knob back together. So first of all, why you might need to uh, hand the lock is it's a cylindrical lock. You're going to want, most likely, the key to be oriented in this sort of direction where the root of the key is towards the floor. Um, it will not ship necessarily the way that you want it to come. Maybe it will. Um, so the, the bottom line is we took it apart to discover if this was five or six pin. We know definitively it is five pin only. We're going to put the cylinder back in. We're going to make sure the cylinder, the face of the cylinder plug seats into that hole of that knob. Okay, It's a fairly attractive knob. Then the knob rows we're going to put right back down. That's going to hold the cylinder in place, okay, reasonably well anyway. We can insert the key into the face of the cylinder and just leave it there. It'll kind of act as a handle, I suppose. So what we have to decide now is the retracting hub is going to be on the side of the door towards the strike jam. So you can put that cylinder in with the retracting hub on this side or on this side. You just have to orient this for the latch bolt to be on the side that you want. And the door can swing four ways. Left hand or right hand, left hand reverse or right hand re reverse. So in your mind's eye, you need to just put this lock the way that you need it to work um, and orient it correctly. This, you know, and, uh, you know, you'll know, you'll be able to just figure out, I suppose, just by emulating the direction of the handle of the door and installing the latch bolt also in the orientation that you want as well, okay? Once you have it sorted, let's say that I'm going to make this for a right-hand reverse door. Okay, right-hand reverse. I'm going to take my latch bolt and I'm going to orient it exactly how I want for a right-hand reverse door. Um, I can see now that I have that. Okay, the, the latch bolt right-hand reverse door is going to be where you will have the door swing out this way and then close. The secure side is the pull side of the door. The door swings out. At this point, we've got the latch and the retracting hub oriented how we want it. The teeth need to be pointed up, and we're just going to bring it together. And using the key kind of as a handle, you're, you're going to be able to wiggle that tailpiece a little bit to the point where you can push the knob on. At that point, you're probably going to need to move it a little bit further. And then you're going to be able to get the cylinder to a, a position where... you'll be able to turn the key and then depress the knob on completely and fully. But I can tell you that I've made a mistake. I've got that cylinder put in 90 degrees in the inc incorrect um, position. Very typical, very common sort of issue to have with locks like this. And they're a bit of a challenge to get off at times because you can't adequately see the pin that you need to depress because, frankly, it's not revealed very well inside of the lock. And admittedly, they can be a bit of a challenge to get off, but that tab is certainly down in the hole, and sometimes you need to just move your tool around a little bit more and you'll be able to get that pulled off. Okay. So at that point, so what we've somewhat intentionally done is um, indicate to you how it can go on wrong. But what needs to happen is the flat tail piece, it's, it's oriented horizontal, I should say. It's a flat tail piece, I suppose, but it is oriented horizontally that needs to go horizontally into that plus sign down in the back of the cylinder. And what happens is when that tailpiece is down in that plus sign, that spring-loaded tab right there is what you're trying to press to get it to come off or back on. But you need to rotate that tailpiece 
clockwise or counterclockwise, I turn them clockwise, so that the spring-loaded retaining clip has room to fully depress. When the tailpiece is horizontal, it occupies that critical space right at the tip of the tool. When you try to depress the spring-loaded clip in, because the tailpiece is in the way, the clip can't go in. But when you rotate that 90, then the clip has enough room to go in and seat itself. So we're doing a right-hand reverse. I'm real thrilled with how that's going on. Ah. You know what happens sometimes is that tailpiece will fall down a little bit and will prevent it from actually seating into the area. Okay, and I can tell now that I have it in, in place because as I turn it, I retract the, the, the hub retractor and I have the key basically vertical. So at this point, I can turn that key and then depress. Actually, you don't even need to depress it at that point. You just will push it back on when the tailpiece uh, is out of the way of the cylinder. Okay, and you'll notice that I needed to jimmy with it, jiggle it, force it, push it. It's like picking locks in the sense that, and I don't make a living picking locks. I, I understand the process. I don't have the skill in my hands. But what they talk about in locksmithing books, especially old, you know, like mid-century locksmithing books, the author will talk about you need to visualize the interior of that lock and what's happening. And it's helpful when putting a knob back on to do that because when you're putting the thing back together, if you understand what the components are doing and what orientation they're in, um, you can better reassemble it. I've had customers call after they got curious and pulled that knob off and for their life, they can't get the thing back on. And that's because it's not easy. They are not; they don't possess the knowledge of being able to internalize in their mind's eye the interior parts. Plus, an inexpensive lock, grade three, is not made to go back together super nice. That's the bottom line. That is a drawback of all low-end lock sets. Ultra is no different. Ultra is no better or worse than anyone else. I've cer I, I can't say I've certainly tried to put back together worse than this. But the moral of the story is I was able to understand why I wasn't getting success. And only when I turned it 90 degrees did it go in. Well, why did it work at 90 degrees? Because that tailpiece went from here to here. It's not now hanging down like this. When I rotated it, it could stand up proud like this and then enter. Because if you recall, that's a plus shape in there. The tailpiece will go in any of four ways, if you follow my meaning. But when I turn the lock vertically the tailpiece could now hang straight and then enter what i needed to do partially was to get the tailpiece into the plus sign turn it slightly so that i could continue to push on um, and getting that c clip when i turned it slightly a little bit of room to work with me to to breast to depress a, a small amount and then it get it put then get it put back down the most important thing that you can do at this point when you take this apart is you tug on it you pull it you make sure it doesn't come off um, I have had people call me, the knob just came off in my hands. Okay, that's either your lock is broken <laughs> or someone took it apart and didn't put it fully back together. I myself am guilty of not putting it fully back together. I did a job for a client, a client of mine, a home builder, typical Irish home builder in Chicago. Um, he would always order all the locks for me. I would deliver them. This time, uh, the client asked at closing who could rekey the locks. And he says, well, call my guy who supplied the hardware. He'll come rekey the locks. Well, sure enough, I did. Went to the house, rekeyed the locks. A couple hours later, I'm done. The last lock to do was a knob lock on a, uh, entry, a swinging entry door to the kitchen. Put it back together. Thank you very much. Paid. Signed the paperwork. Left. Half an hour in Chicago traffic got me about three miles away. Client called and said the lock, the knob just came off in my hands. Well, I know I was the last person to have touched it. And I realized at that moment I was not in a rush to leave, but at the end of the job, you're out of there. Right? And I didn't tug on it, went back 30 seconds, key in, rotate it, push it on, 
seated it properly, tugged on it, I apologize. There you go. The moral of that story is always make sure it works before you leave the job site. Let's continue on and review the components that are included with this lock. Okay, so as we move through looking at this ultra lock, our next step is to take a look at all of the components that are included. And it's a, you know, this is a typical lock set, so there's not going to be anything unusual or special that we're needing to go over here. Uh, you know, the first thing, of course, is going to be the um, latch bolt. So the latch bolt that comes with the lock, you know, very uh, uh, thankfully is a is a universal, well, it's not universal, it is adjustable from two and three eighths to two and three quarter, okay? That's for sure what this is. There are installation instructions that are linked to down below this video um, that will show you how to change the back set from one size to the next. And those installation instructions are here. Those are linked to down below, but the instructions as it governs the latch bolt are page two of that link and are shown here. So it's very simple and straightforward. The latch is factory preset at 60 millimeter or two and three eighths. To adjust it to 70 millimeter or two and three quarters, simply twist the rear latch housing, then slide the housing back, the 10 millimeter, to click into groove to set into 70 millimeter two and three quarter position. To return to 60 millimeter, repeat the above in reverse. So all you do is you literally just grab the housing and rotate it then slide it, then rotate it back. That's two and three quarter, back to two and three eighths, okay? Um, very good. So yeah, um, that's the last bolt. That's how we reverse that around. This is going to be two and a quarter by one inch two and a quarter by one inch. Because this is a keyed lock, it will have a deadlocking tab. This little tab right there, okay? That will allow you to hold that bolt in the um, locked position. There's something very important to point out to you as well. Um, if the deadlocking tab wasn't present, you'd be able to lloyd the latch bolt just by pushing something against it. There's something strikingly absent from the face of the latch, and that would be any indication at all that this latch, this lock is fire rated. It's not on the hardware at all. Frankly, it wouldn't matter if it was on the box. It's not on the hardware. You would see that normally on the face of the latch bolt. You sometimes see it as a decal around the barrel of the latch bolt as well. You don't usually see it on the lock anywhere. I can't think of a lock that you would. There's certainly nothing stamped on this. So the bottom line is, if you have a fire rated door, this expressly is not permitted for use on that door. We're not the fire police, we're not the code police, um, but we are industry professionals and, that have spent a lot of time studying code, becoming certified fire door inspectors. Uh, and because this lock has never been tested in a fire door is the reason why it can't be used. There's nothing to say that it wouldn't pass the fire test. Manufacturer of this lock has not subjected this lock to that test, so therefore, as a result, we don't know if it would um, pass or not. And since we don't know, it is not to be used on a fire door. So be mindful of that. Latch bolt. Instructions for the latch bolt. Very easy. A strike plate. That's going to be a two and three quarter tall T strike. If you use your imagination, you can see why we would. Uh, Call it a T-strike, two and three quarter tall. The overall width of the strike is about an inch and a half. Strikes are measured from the center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip, however, and this is coming in right at about one inch. It's a bit smaller than standard, inch and a quarter, inch and three sixteenths would be considered standard. So be mindful that this is a uh, one inch lip length or quite thereabouts. It appears to be about one inch, maybe even shy on that. Hold that tape measure a bit further down. Yeah, it looks like it's closer to 15 16 So be mindful of that. Okay, some sort of a steel plated chrome sort of latch bolt, uh, strike plate. 
Speaking of the strike, it will include a dust box. A dust box. That's to be mounted right here so that you finish off the installation. And you do not permit the particulate from the wall to creep into the living space. And you'll want to have that dust box there. You won't want to see the rough wall construction of what's behind here. Okay, so be mindful to use that. You're going to get a screw package. Uh, there should be six screws in here. Yeah, there will be. Two for the latch, two for the strike, two for the lock body. That's all you're going to get. The four screws are the same for the latch and strike. The two machine screws are for the lock. You're going to get two keys, Schlag C 5-pin, original look-alike key blanks. That's what we would call a direct code that's on there. Five, uh, 96976, they're all keyed differently. That's what this one just happens to be um, combinated to. You really can't see that. Doesn't matter. The direct code will be on here. That is represent, representative of the actual cuts per the Schlage system from bow to tip. Great. The last thing is an emergency tool uh, that you would use. Actually, it's not an emergency tool. Um, this is just a tool that you would be able to use to... I had used our shop standard tool. I could have just simply used this end to... Um, remove, replace the knob. This part over here is also what would be a for, uh, would be called a spanner wrench. There's nothing on here. Oh no, there is. On the inside trim, there's a small little black dot there. Well, that's a hole. You can insert your spanner wrench there, and then rotate that with the spanner wrench just to draw it down tight to the uh, to the door. The next step is to show you how this lock gets installed. So let's proceed with that now. Now, installing a lock of this sort of caliper is always uh, an easy endeavor in the sense of understanding how it goes together. You have a couple of threaded roses, and that's nice. You're going to want to make sure that the retracting hub is in the center of the thickness of the door, and you're just going to adjust your hubs, pardon me, your threaded rosettes to accommodate. Uh, clearly, we have knocking around there the loose mounting plate that's there. That we can see right here, okay? So what I like to do is turn that all the way down, the interior rows, so that I can get the tool down onto the spring-loaded tab in order to carefully depress that. And then hopefully pop it off. There we go. So why does this need to come off? Just to get to that mounting tab. At that point, you'll thread your rows that off. Okay. Very typical now. Okay. Now you're going to notice that there are a couple of tangs here. One is here and the other is here. That, those are meant to be positioned in the 3 and 9 o'clock position. You can install them vertically if you want to, okay? but they're meant to be at 3 and 9. If your door has small semicircles at the 3 and 9 o'clock position, that's definitely where it goes. You'll want to have that there. You'll see that in a metal, a, a hollow metal door, a metal clad door, um, any door that um, has a non-wood face uh, or non-fiberglass either, you'll probably see an accommodation for that. If you're installing this down onto a wood door or a fiberglass door, that little prong is literally just going to bite into the face of the, um, of the, of the door, and it's really just meant to keep that from rotating is the bottom line. Okay. When you take this off, you're not going to want to try to rotate the um, outside threaded rows because you're going to scratch the surface of the door, kind of sidestepping the intent for them to be there. So you'll want to make sure that you have the lock in the door with your retracting hub centered in the thickness of the door with the prongs or the tangs at the 9 and 3 o'clock position and then just place it through the door. So you're going to set this distance first before you put it on and just start trying to thread. Um, you'll, you'll gouge the doors, the bottom line. Once you have that set, this mounting plate can really go on either way. Okay, Then you're going to use those two machine screws that are in there through the hole into the tapped hole that's here. Okay, And then down here as well. So that's really simple and straightforward. Once that's on, bring your interior rows, your threaded interior rows, and thread that down to the point where it's 
in a good position for you. I would then most likely take my spanner wrench and I would tighten that so that it was secure on the door. Don't over tighten it. Definitely don't over tighten it. That will serve to um, compromise the integrity of the lock to work smoothly. After that, it would be important to take note of where that spring loaded C clip is so that the slot in the stem of the knob, of which it's only in one location, will then go back down accordingly. So you'll be able to get this pushed down. It won't go any further, so don't push it until you push that pin in. Okay, give it a good tug, okay? That's what we're dealing with. Very simple, very straightforward. Now what I'd like to do is switch to the screen view where we can take a look at these installation instructions, make sure that me just winging it works actually, and uh, correct any missteps that I have provided. Um, you know, should have looked at the installation instructions first. We're going to now though. So let's switch to the screen view. Okay, so here's the item that we're looking at, and before we get to the installation instructions, which are here, um, let's just go over it real quick. Priced and sold per each, stainless steel finish. It appears to be stainless material with a brushed finish, grade three, and that's a storeroom. Always locked on the outside, and you always need a key to come in. The interior is always unlocked, permitting immediate egress at all times. These are keyed differently. If you buy five, they're all going to be keyed differently. Now, keep in mind that we can perform the locksmithing services here in-house, so we can key these however you like. We've talked at length about the fact that these are five pin only, has an adjustable back set, is rekeyable, and you can install composite type cylinders into these locks. They should list Kaba Ilko here as well because um, it will take that generic composite design that they've based on Schlage and Arrow and Falcon and etc etc etc. When they say Asa and Medico they mean that you will, will very likely be able to enter pass through these knobs a high security cylinder. Medico is a famed um, rotating pin tumbler that has a sidebar and nowadays a, a uh, slider as well. ASA is a sidebar configuration in their key system. So there are multiple shear lines to contend with that at, at a single time. Um, and in the Medico 3, there's, there's three things you got to deal with. Adjustable for inch and three eighths to inch and three quarter. Internal mechanism, heavy gauge, cold rolled steel, positive push and turn button locking uh, mechanism not available on a storeroom lock. That's just always unlocked. Panic proof mechanism. So I take that to mean that it has a latch bolt with the deadlocking tab on it, panic proof. Three inch threaded rosette outside, sure, same on the inside. Now the link to the installation instructions are here. And we're just going to briefly touch on them because I don't think there's much here to really contend with. First of all, page two shows us how to move that latch around, which we've demonstrated. Page one, obviously mark your hole, prep everything. This video will not touch on the uh, steps to mortise, machine a door. Feel free to call me. I'd be happy to walk you through those steps, have your order number, and I will walk you through the steps of how to prep this door for a wood, uh, application, steel, stainless, fiberglass, whatever you're installing it down to. It does include a template which is right here. Okay. Inch and three eighths, inch and three quarter, two and three eighths, two and three quarter. Just have to be mindful when you're marking all this stuff. Do a reality check. Make sure that everything seems like it's going to work right. After the cross bore is drilled, which is two and an eighth, the one inch hole in the edge. Attach your latch bolt physically. They're going to tell you now to install the strike plate as well. That's good. Go ahead. You'll need to remove that inside trim as we demonstrated earlier. And then as we predicted, you need to adjust that outside rose. So the center line is right on that retracting hub. Okay. 
you have to be sure that when you install the lock from the outside or the secure side that you get the latch bolt engaged in the retracting hub just like they're showing here otherwise the lock is not going to work very uh, well if at all it's not going to work at all so it needs to be uh, assembled correctly this this line here and this line here is meant to refer to the retracting hub it must fit into the slot on either side to get it in so that you can depend on the application after that happens attach your plate two screws provided your inside threaded rows will go on you'll thread that on get it down to the face of the door but again outside first install the knob as we demonstrated if you need to change the hand of the lock, you can do it while the door lock is on the door, or you can do it the other way. They do want that teeth shown up, and there's a reason for that. Not only is it considered standard in North America to have the teeth pointed up, whereas in Europe it's not standard, and in fact it's the opposite way in most instances, because they use what are called profile cylinders, or sometimes referred to as Euro cylinders. Those springs in the chambers are pointed towards the top, of, um, forgive me, they're at the bottom of the unit. And if you recall our cylinder at all, you recall that it had this jutting up area here. Here's our cylinder plug. There's our tailpiece. Okay, here's our cylinder plug right in here. Our keyway is here. This area right here is called the Bible. It's literally called the Bible. This is where those springs exist. You want the teeth to be up so that the springs are always pushing the pins down, which would be called a positive locking scenario. In Euro cylinders, this entire arrangement is reversed where the springs are on the bottom and the driver pins are sitting on top of the springs. It is without a doubt factual that eventually the weight of the tumbler itself, the weight of the driver pin with constant usage, because now your teeth are upside down, okay, in relationship to it being this way, will fatigue that spring and eventually is not going to hold the driver pin in a biased position uh, as it should in the long term. I have seen it happen. Um, in cylinders that were good and old so that's why we want it that way you can install it upside down it's okay in the in the sense that it's really not okay the correct way is teeth up so that you don't eventually over the course of many years fatigue those springs so that's why they give you this here which is why I also went through it with you as well template is here as we talked about then the latch reversing instructions let's wrap up this video on camera so I certainly am a fan of ultra hardware um, and you know why it's it, it is true that they have a good quality product um, if you are a commercial client look at their lock sets look at their door closers look at their exit devices look at their closers good value there no doubt they are an importer of material from Asia um, and I say that because, before I say that, if you are a residential client, look at their cabinet hardware. Again, great value that's sitting there. Now, they're an importer from Asia. What does that really mean? Well, to me, what that means is I can buy an imported lock set anywhere. I can buy it on the corner. I can buy it from a place like us. I can buy, buy it anywhere. There's nothing unusual or special about this. I happen to think that it seems to be of nice quality and you know seems to uh, work well that the knob comes back nice the uh, the cylinder does work I took it apart it works smoothly it went back together reasonably well but so are every other almost every other imported lock that you can buy in my opinion in my estimation the reason that you would decide to work with ultra over someone else is because you're not buying the lock you're buying their service their technical support their responsiveness behind that. It's the relationship that you have with them. As I said earlier, there's a particular gentleman at Ultra who he is definitely not order entry. He is definitely not general customer service. He's at an elevated level within the organization. When I have a technical question, I email him. 
And he could easily say, please email customer service for this. But he doesn't. He takes my requests personally. He answers them thoroughly. He understands the product. It's that why I would consider purchasing this beyond the fact that it seems like it's a nice lock. Um, it's, it's that relationship alone why Ultra earns the future consideration. Um, and in fact, they are certainly not alone when it comes to large importers of Asian manufactured builders hardware. Um, but I would argue that they are above average um, when it comes to responding to those technical requests. When I asked the manufacturer on other locks if they'll take, they used to take a six pin uh, key blank and they don't anymore. This gentleman is able to not only tell me the answer of what's compatible, but tell me the history of it and what happened and what changed. So that's why you look at Ultra. Speaking of looking at Ultra, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Ultra hardware products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Commercial and residential type clients do indeed look at those product categories. I think you'll find tremendous value there. Uh, Ultra sometimes has minimum order multiple, or I should say order multiples. They don't want to sell you one lock. They'd like to sell a box. That's the only way they're going to sell it. So sometimes we bump into that. Um, but otherwise, it's not always a, a restriction. If you have any questions on the Ultra hardware, this is their part number four. I think it's 44132. Yeah, 44132. Grade three light duty storeroom knob lock or any other Ultra product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.